If anybody is watching right now, hello and welcome to another discussion about Savannah College of Art and Design. Today I'm joined by Colleen McFarlane, Megan Shepard, and Taylor Skillen, and we're going to talk about what it's like to major in fibers at SCAD. So as always, I have some topics that we'll go through, and then um, if anybody has any questions, um, we'll have a Q&A session at the end, and you can post the questions in the chat on the side on YouTube. So I think that's, that's it. Um, that would be great to have an intro song. <laughs> anyway, so um, I'll have you guys go and introduce yourselves. Um, tell us who you are, when you attended SCAD, and what you're currently working on. So, Colleen, you can start. Okay, hi, I'm Colleen McFarlane. I actually transferred to SCAD halfway through my sophomore year, so the winter quarter. Um, and I was actually a fashion major first, and then I switched to fibers. Um, and I graduated in 2014. I currently live in Charleston, South Carolina, and I am an owner of a small business, 5-5 Five Five Studio, so I'm a quilter, weaver, beater, just trying to get that going, <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> so, yeah. <clears throat> Megan, what about you? Um, my name is Megan Shepard. <laughs> um, I went to SCAD from 2010 to 2014. And I came as a photo major, uh, which is, like, way different. I feel like a lot of – there was a lot of girls that started as photo and switched to fibers, but uh, I took the intro to fibers class and ended up wanting to switch uh, and loved it. So that happened. And now I live in San Francisco, and I'm just working in retail, and I work at Trader Joe's, and I'm trying to figure out which direction I want to go in – versus like small business, because I work for a small business at a kid's store, um, or more corporate, um, which both are available here, so yeah, I'm trying to figure that out. And Taylor? I am Taylor Skillen. I went to SCAD from 2010 to 2014, and I also came in as a photo major, switched to fibers, but I was, <laughs> let's be honest, I was pretty over photo as soon as I got there, so it wasn't <laughs> long lived. Um, and I live in Middlebury, Indiana, which is my hometown, and, um, right now I work, um, well, I work for a catering company, and anyone who likes to cook should definitely do that, because it's super dope, um, <laughs> and, uh, then I do kind of like a fine art practice at home, trying to, like, get those juices going to see what happens next in my life, so... Yeah, the juices. The creative <laughs> juices. <laughs> this is already just going to be the sassiest live stream ever. <laughs> I'm on today. <laughs> I think it's funny that um, none of you, like, straight away went into fibers. You changed your mind. Um, I didn't even know what, what fibers made you, mm, Yeah. What reeled you into doing fibers? Um, for me, I had to take... So at, my, at the last college I went to, I had to take an, in a textile class, and I hated it. It was all lecture, and I just, I think I fell asleep every class. And so when I went back to SCAD, my, my credits didn't transfer, because at SCAD, um, you have to take, like, a studio and lecture. It's like a combo in the fashion department. And so I took Intro to Textiles for fashion majors, and I just, I, like, loved every single project we did. We did, like tie-dye stuff and beading and we did weaving projects and I had no idea that it was that um, amazing and so I I went home winter break and I was like mom I don't want to do that anymore I just want to go and do everything that I did in that one class and so I switched I switched my major like that without even really giving it a second thought And then what about photography for you guys? You both dropped out of that then. Um, did you do it right away when you were a freshman, or um, did it come later on that you switched into fibers? What about you, Megan? Um, I did photo for pretty consistently through my freshman year, um, and I liked it at first, um, but I didn't really like that... I, I don't know, I felt restricted by photo because um, we had to have, like, 8 to 10 photos within a theme, like, within a week, you know, and that was, like, I, like, wanted to kind of, like, take my time with my projects more, and, like, it's really hard because you're trying to, like, create something that doesn't exist, like, in this frame, and I don't know. So, 
anyway, that was really hard for me, and I remember a lot of girls were taking the Intro to Fibers class, and I was, like, really interested by their projects, um, and I wish Kendra were here, because, like, I remember her taking the Intro to Fibers class, and I was like, oh my gosh, this looks super fun, so I took it, and I had Doris, and it was amazing, and I remember, like, being like, oh my gosh, like, am I thinking of switching my major? Like, I felt like I was, like, betraying my photo friends, and I, one of my best friends was a photo major, and I was like, hey, I think I'm going to switch my major to fibers. I hope that you don't hate me. Um, <laughs> and then I did, and I, like, I like really felt like I could express myself a lot more eloquently through fibers than I was through my, like, dumb photos that I was trying to take, so it was exciting. Totally. But that to say, I do still, like, use photos in my work, and I, like, really still enjoy photo, um, but I am glad that I didn't decide to make it, like, what I do. Is it about the same for you, Taylor? Um, I did photo heavily in high school, and I worked for a photographer in high school, and I think I just realized, like, it's going to sound so bad, but it's really true. It's my personality. I just didn't want to work with other people as much, like, <laughs> deal with, like, clients in that sort of way. <laughs> and and so I was getting, I was really burnt out. And so when I got to college, I knew I wanted to go to SCAD, because, like, my heart was set on it, but I actually had no idea what I was going to do. So photo was just, like, what I said I was going to do. And I was feeling very, like, had, like, lots of anxiety about it. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing here. And so a lot of girls um, that I was friends with that were older and had been in school for a while were asking me, like, what do you like? What's interesting? And I was just, like, I was, like, I like to work with my hands. I like things that take a lot of time. I like... You know, I, I like to focus on something. And, and they were like, you should check out Fiverr's. Like, you should really just go to Fiverr, go to the op uh, open studio, and just check it out. And I went, and I was like, this is, like, everything that's beautiful in life. And <laughs> <laughs> I want to do this all the time. And I, I, like, literally had no idea how anybody did anything they were doing. But I just knew that I wanted to learn. And so I also had Doris for Intro to Fiverr's. And it was magical, and she was so magical, and I was just like, yep, this is what I'm going to do. And so I think halfway through that class, I switched, I, like, confirmed that I was going to do fiber. so. Doris is just a magical person. I she love her. Like, all around. creature that's <laughs> so amazing, and it, yeah. And she can just, like, get anybody to be a fibers major, I feel like. <laughs> I know. Her. And she, she can have like, yeah, sign you. me up. <laughs> I had two of my guy friends meet her when I was in her weaving class, and they were like, oh my gosh, I love her so much. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> so for those of us who don't really know what fibers is as a major, how would you guys describe it? <laughs> who wants to try? Um, okay, so I like to tell people that, like, fashion, because everyone that I tell that I study textile design or fibers, they always assume that I do fashion. Um which makes sense because textiles are obviously used in fashion. Um, but I tell people that, like, fashion people create clothing and fibers people create the fabric for the clothing or they create fabric for interiors or they do, like, wallpaper or something, you know? So uh, it's more about, like, the materials that go into everything, basically. <laughs> it's funny because no one really realizes how much fibers is everywhere. Um, so it's kind of fun to point it out to people be like, that's a textile, that's a textile, that's a textile. Um, so that's like the very practical thing that I tell people. Um, yeah. <laughs> my, my dad, whenever <laughs> people would ask, like, what's Taylor doing at college? He, was, <laughs> he had a really hard time explaining what I was doing because he didn't really know himself. But he always said, he said fibers, and they're like, what's that? And he's like, think of all the fabric you like encounter in a day or think of like the patterns in your clothes or like carpet and we live this is the RV industry like this is like the base where all the RVs are made here where I live and so he would talk he would just like be like think of all the textiles and RVs and so that's like the easiest way to explain it, I think is to be like all the textiles in your life like that's where it comes from but I think what the fibers department at SCAD is really taking old techniques like knitting and weaving and crochet and felting and pattern design, but then applying new technology to it and new ideas to it. So it, you learn the basics of what women have 
I mean, women mostly, but men too, have done for like the whole existence of the world, and um, and you find new and creative ways to do it, and so it's really cool because you're kind of like it's really historical, but then it's also you can make it extremely current, and it's a fun way to use your voice, I think. And fibers is so cool because like a lot of people are like, well, what can you possibly do with that? It's like you could literally do anything. Like yeah. there are some people who go into corporate things. There are some people who do go into fashion and like textile design. And then like I, I like handmade objects. I like things that are made by someone's hands and that like has a story behind it. And so, like that's that's fibery and like, <laughs> yeah. um, but like you can do fine art. Um, you know, like there's such a range, and I think that's kind of why people get stumped on it because they're like, well, you could. Do you could technically do this too, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, basically, I can, do, I can do any of these things because, like, I had such a well-rounded, you know, teaching. Yeah. I also like what you said earlier, Colleen. Though, what did you call it? Fibers is being a professional grandma. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and like some people, some people laugh, but I mean, it's so true. It's true. <laughs> it's like, well, I remember everyone would be like, oh, like. My friend's home would be like, I have to take my midterm essay, you know, do my midterm essay, I have to study for this test, blah, 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 and I'd be like, oh, I'm knitting a sweater for my final. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> but I taught my dad how to knit. Um, I, I was like right after I graduated, and so he's like super obsessed with knitting. It's like his way to relax after work, and he knit everybody a sweater. And he's like, I feel like I'm like an old lady. <laughs> 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 Embrace it. <laughs> Embrace it. But yeah. It is definitely an old lady trade. I don't, yeah, it, it's exciting because there is this, like, new generational thing happening, but there's definitely, like, I went to Thanksgiving at my friend's grandma's house, and she had, like, three looms in her house and was showing me all of them and invited me to her weaving guild. <laughs> so, <Yes. laughs> like, there's a bunch of old ladies, but I haven't gone because I haven't heard from her, but. I want to go. <laughs> it's like the coolest part. It's so like you can learn from these people who learn from like their grandparents and it's mm -hmm. so like multi-generational that it's not just like oh well we can only do this with technology. Like if the power goes out I can still weave. Yeah. <laughs> like you know and I can still knit things and so I think that's kind of cool just to like like Taylor said like go back in the history of like where it all came from and talk to other people who like that. <laughs> So then as a freshman, um, when you start out in fibers, uh, what are some of the foundations classes that you still have to take? Do you have to do a second drawing class in life drawing if you do fibers, do you know? Well, the, when we were graduating, there was a new curriculum coming out. And so I don't know if I can't really speak to, like, what the new – I don't know. The curriculums may not be the right word, but it was, like – the new requi requirements, I can't say anything. What is that <laughs> word I'm trying to say? Um, <laughs> but so when when we, at least when I was doing it, we had to take drawing, like you had to do your foundations, that SCAD has foundations where you have to take like two drawing classes and uh, 3D design classes and, and 2D design. And um, basically every major has to do that, I think. There are a couple, like, sound design and film that are a little less so, but, um, yeah, you do you do those things, and then Intro to Fibers is, like, the first class you take, which it might have a different name now, I'm not sure, but that was where you, you learn a lot, a little bit about a, a lot of things that you go over in Fibers mm -hmm. more in more depth. But I think they recently it. took it into three classes now. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know. I could be wrong. I It was, like... I could be wrong. Never mind. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> they do a really good job at letting you know what it's going to be like. So if you if you take a, your first class and you don't like it, then maybe fibers isn't for you. But if you take take it and you're like, wow, I'm really interested in this, then you probably have a good basis of like, oh, I'm really going to enjoy enjoy this major or, or enjoy taking classes in this department. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know a couple people who they use their. Um, free electives, I guess. I think you get three of them yeah. in your um, course at SCAD. You get to pick whatever three electives that you would want, and a lot of people use those to take those um, first introduction classes for the different majors when they're trying to pick something out. So I know some people, like in your guys' case, you probably did, um, well, did you do intro to photography? 
either way, you can um, do an intro class for one major, and then I knew some people who did um, intro to fibers as just an elective, and they liked it so much that they decided to carry on with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's called I think like that's in, pretty intro normal. for non-majors. I think they just oh yeah, you, they did class do that. That is cool for people who aren't in that major, um, which is kind of cool, you know, because then you're you're in with all the people who are kind of still trying to figure it out, and um, you guys can like experiment more with what your major is mixed with fibers, you know, which I think is really popular. A lot of I think a lot of what fibers like when you go to the fibers department and see what the students are doing, a lot of it is fibers but with other things. You know, it's not just like it's not just straight knitting, it's like knitting in fashion or knitting in photography. Like those kinds of things happen, I think, a lot in the fibers department. And so when you get somebody who has experience in another department or is their major is another department, it it's really cool. I think it's very well rounded and has a little bit more diversity in the work you see. Yeah. As far as the materials that you use in the classes, um, which ones are the most expensive? Like, what ones do you have to buy for yourself, and what things are in the studios? Also, part two of the question, I guess. Mm, it's, like, different for... For the intro class, it's mostly just, like, you know, you need to buy, like, your wool roving so you can learn how to spin, and you'll buy some yarn, and it doesn't matter if your yarn is expensive or not, because it's just your intro class, and you just kind of... It, you can kind of... it's like a range like depending on how nice your project is going to be like you can buy like really cheapo stuff or you can buy really nice stuff um because like cotton and like cheap acrylic yarns and stuff like that are going to be more cheap but if you buy like nice wool or uh like silk fabric or anything like that it's going to be more expensive or like fabric that's ready to die um is a little more expensive um so yeah. it just depends and then also there's like equipment that you they have a lot of equipment obviously just because they have like the looms and like the tables and everything but um you have to buy like your shuttle for weaving or you have to buy screens for screen printing and that was a lot um the supplies for screen printing i think were really really expensive it was like maybe close to three hundred dollars um just for, like, everything you need to start the class. Um, so those you, like, <laughs> that was, like, a big hefty cost. But, um, yeah, I think you kind of have to know that. And I think that a lot of majors, I think supplies are always a factor. Because um, with photo, yeah. you would have to buy stuff for, like, the large format class or, like, rent stuff out, you know, so. Yeah, I agree screen printing was really expensive. Um, Obviously, you have to have those materials to do screen printing. Like, you have to have screens. And uh, I think, like, fabric is so expensive. Like, nice fabric. I don't think I really knew that until I was a fibers major. So, like, dyeing and screen printing where you're, you're using fabrics. Um, but I think it really depends on, like, what, I, what you want, the quality of your project, you know. So you really get to dictate the materials you use a lot of the time. And, and there are teachers or classes where you have to have certain things, but then there are other times where you can choose your your materials. And I mean like I went to my sister also went to SCAD and she was a film major and like her projects cost like they had to raise money for their projects. Like their projects are like thousands of dollars. So in comparison I felt like my like twenty dollar yarn <laughs> for one class wasn't too much but um, SCAD's, I mean, SCAD's expensive, and the classes cost a lot, and the materials cost a lot, but I think, I think it, it, you know, it's worth it, but it is kind of pricey. But I also, I do use a lot of the materials now that I've graduated. I still have them, and I still use them on a regular basis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think, like, I did not take screen printing, um, but I think maybe Lucky. my most, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I wish I did. It's just, when you transfer in your junior year, you really are lim You have to squeeze it all in in a short amount of time. Um, I think that maybe my most expensive class was, I don't know. I feel like they were all pretty equal. All my senior work, I um, I spent more money on the product, or on the products, yeah, totally, on the um, supplies <laughs> because I wanted, I wanted it to look a certain way. Yeah. So that meant I bought high-grade materials. Um, mm -hmm. I did a lot of like beading and weaving. So for my weaving stuff, I went out and I bought like a merino silk, and it's because I wanted that. I wanted that. <laughs> you know, there wasn't any way to go around it. Um, but kind of like they said, like you can kind of, like, if you want your 
the classes that you're maybe like less interested in or things that you have like less of an, of an emphasis on, you can kind of buy the cheaper things and kind of learn the technique and then kind mm -hmm. of go from there, you know? Mm -hmm. um, which I know I, I did a lot. I would buy like some cheaper things to be like, I have no idea how to knit. <laughs> like I have no idea. I don't want to go out and buy like $80 worth of yarn if I hate it. Mm -hmm. So, um, which I'm glad I didn't because I am not good at knitting. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I think it just really depends where I would go and buy like expensive yarn for weaving. I don't know. It's just like a give and take kind of thing. But I still use all my materials that I bought. I have like a nice little collection in my studio here that is, it's still from SCAD. Your so. studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where I am right now. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> the materials I'm in my room. Classes, did you get most of those at the art stores, or did you have to go to like a separate fabric store to get your materials? Um, I, I mean, it, it's not always cheap to go to the art stores to buy stuff. Obviously, like yarn, you get a better selection at like Joann's or Michaels, but. I feel like I bought a lot of stuff online, to be honest. Mm. And, um, like, Blick was a good place to buy stuff. There's a lot of it. really small fabric shops around. Yeah, um, they're awesome. They're awesome, yeah. I really liked, um, Measure was good. What was the other one? Oh, the one that's, like, on that corner. I forget what it's called. Yeah, like, Up Liberty. Yeah. I yeah. really liked that one. Um, but yeah, that was really good. Awesome. Again, there's like a range. So like, if you just needed, wow. if you needed like any old thing, you would drive all the way out to Joanne Fabrics, and you'd have to have a car <laughs> or find someone with a car. Um, yeah. But there's a lot of small places downtown. There's a lot of small yarn shops, and they're more expensive in this like boutiques, but they're better quality. Yeah, and I think like I don't know if you mentioned the frayed knot for like yarn. Mm -hmm. um, which was like close oh, yeah. to downtown that you could you could like walk there from the fibers building. I mean, I think I don't know. I kind of walked everywhere sometimes. Um, and so like that's pretty cool um, when you don't have to like venture too too far. They they try to have like a lot of stuff downtown. I feel like there were a lot of people who graduated with like fibers degrees or fashion degrees that had little stores in Savannah. And so it was really nice because then you get to, like, go into a store and touch the fabric and know it's high quality. But then you get to choose rather than if you order online or, or whatever, go to Joann's and have to be like, is there acrylic in this? I can't tell. But that yeah. little one on top of Liberty is Fabrica. Fabrica. Oh, yeah. Nice and I think, oh, aren't they, weren't they fiber majors? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think like one a of them was. And one was a fibers, I think. Yeah, I think one of them, ju just one person. Which is super cool. Like as a student, you go in and you can kind of ask them questions, and they're like, "Oh yeah, I had that class. I can, I can help you." Um, or like, "Oh, I can give you advice." Or do not use this fabric. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> um, which is helpful, especially when you're like going in there and you're like, "I have no idea. Like, what is this?" Um, it helps. What is your homework like? Your homework like then? What is a day in the life of a fiber student then? Doing your assimilates. It's a lot. It's it's so time consuming. Yeah. Everything Depending on you what your is, class is. Yeah, everything you make is handmade, and you have to like put time and work and effort into all of it. You like you can't you can't take like shortcuts because you'll be able to tell most of the time. Um, and so it was a lot, but. I mean, every almost every project I made was basically portfolio ready, um, which was is cool when you look back. You're like, I made that in my first like I had a we had to do like Behance profiles and um I had one and I mean I collaborated with photographers and stuff and it was just for my first beading class. It wasn't even like a legit like this is my senior stuff. So I feel like I put a lot of time into it because. Um, like, A, you have to, and B, you just get good stuff out of it, you know? Most classes, too, you would, like, learn the technique throughout the class, and then you'd have, like, one big project at the end. So it was like you're putting a lot of energy into that one big project. Yeah. yeah. I feel like the fibers department's really into notebooks and keeping notebooks. And so a lot of time 
like 3D fibers, for instance. You like start with like knitting and you learn how to knit and you make samples. So much sample making in fibers, it is like you get so sick of samples. You make samples of everything. And so you learn different te techniques, make a sample, put it in your notebook, and then move on to crochet or felting. And um, that's great because you get to learn and get to like hands-on do it. And then maybe like you only have two real projects at the end of the quarter in your notebook and you get graded on the two projects in your notebook. And so um, then you get to choose like like, oh, okay, so I learned crochet, knit, felt, I'm going to make a crochet project. And so that's pretty cool. I feel like a lot of fiber stuff, you get to, like, go home and watch Netflix and work on your fibers mm -hmm. project. <laughs> You're just like, <laughs> it's like, I remember beating, <sighs> I spent 100 hours beating this, like, collar, which I didn't need to spend that much time, but I was super obsessed with it. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I binge-watched everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. Like, everything. I... I watched so many seasons of so many shows, it's so unhealthy. <laughs> like, so unhealthy. But we do keep a lot of notebooks, which is super cool, like later once you graduate. So because I was trying to be prepared. Yeah, I was hoping you would whip it out. <laughs> I have my intro to fibers notebook with like our little basket because you learn how to like make a little basket. <laughs> and um, you just kind of like go through and you you take notes and you learn this is awkward, different techniques and stuff, um, which is super cool and um, you learn how to make colors and do sketches. And so, like, here's me learning how to, what yarn this is. I have no idea. <laughs> it's so nostalgic. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, you learn, like, this is my first weaving sample. Aww. And um, it's just, it's cool just to, like, go back and be like, oh, these are artists that inspired me. This is my very first crochet thing that I've ever done. Um, and you can kind of go back and, like, learn um, like relearn techniques or go back through old ideas and kind of remake them now that you know more techniques. Do you know what I mean? Um, so like I'm working on a personal project now that was from my senior notebook. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just like, it was just one of those little ones that like I scribbled in the corner, but it's because of these notebooks that I have surrounding me, like they're mm -hmm. everywhere. <laughs> this is my weaving one. Whoa! That's beautiful. It's like, <laughs> throw up of, of <laughs> um, but like I I have all this information so if I have questions like I can just go back in my notebooks which is so cool mm -hmm. yeah so that's really neat and I'm like jealous that you have that to take away and like just have as its own like art piece by itself in addition mm -hmm. to the projects that you did that's really cool yeah and I, I don't know I don't know like how many other majors do that you know as yeah, intently as we did. <laughs> every every class had a notebook, which at the time is so irritating. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> But then you learn. They're really teaching you how to do research. Mm -hmm. yeah, and they're really teaching you how to um, like document your own work and document your thought process. Because now that I'm like don't have projects and I have to make up my own projects, I realize like I've a lot of the skills that I need to like figure out what I'm doing and and I have you know have thoughtful work I learned from doing those notebooks so yeah it's worth it it's worth it it's worth it so. <laughs> which of the classes in the fibers major is the most challenging or is it screen printing like you already talked about <laughs> I think it depends on the person like a lot of people have a hard time with the like what was it uh, computer, like the CAD class, uh, computer oh, design, yeah. because most fibers majors are more textile, so when they have to get on the computer, I think it's more of a challenge. Um, I really liked the CAD class, uh, but I kind of knew my way around Photoshop, so it wasn't too bad for me. Um, but yeah, I know a lot of my friends, I lived with three other fibers majors, and I think we all kind of struggled with the CAD class in one way or another. Um, but screen printing is super hard, um, just because like, well, first of all, the teacher is super intense. <laughs> Everyone knows that Jill is really intense. Um, and um, so it's just like, it feels like, it almost feels like you're in like a Russian ballet class or something. Like it's very, it's very intense. <laughs> um, so true. But, um, yeah, she just is very serious about like getting good work out of you um, and doesn't really take any 
crap. <laughs> um, yeah. And then it's also just it, like it's like a kind of intense process. Like you, are, it's like you're using basically your whole body, um, and you have to be really exact in your measurements because we're not just like screen printing like an image like on a t-shirt. Like we're doing patterns, so we have to like have the pattern fit into itself. Like so, it's like a really like you have to think a lot about it, and you have to have a really thoughtful project. Um, so it's just really intense. Um, but I loved screen printing, <laughs> so um, I did. I I loved it. <laughs> I was super intimidated because, like, you kind of know you know what you have all the classes you have to take, like in the beginning. And I was super intimidated by weaving and screen printing. And I took them. Um, I took weaving first and screen printing second. And I was so terrified of weaving. I thought it was gonna kill me. And I thought. I had a friend who took weaving before me, and she like came into class, and her fingers were bleeding. And I was like, "What happened?" And she's like, "Weaving." <laughs> so I was so scared. And then it turned out like it was really hard, and there's a lot of math, and there's a lot of calculation, and it takes a while to learn really how to use the loom. But it was so great. Like I loved it. I loved every bit of it. And Doris was really difficult, but she pushes you to like really do your best. And so I got done with weaving, and I was like, if I can do weaving and I can, like, master that class, I could do screen printing. And screen printing was terrifying. <laughs> um, but Jill really does, like, want you to do your best. And so um, I came out unscathed, and I have some cool projects, and I did learn quite a bit. And some people love screen printing. Like, for some people making a repeat pattern and then being able to like actually make the fabric with the repeat pattern like print it is really really satisfying for them and so I know a lot of people who loved that and did really well and um, if repeat pattern design is some a part of fibers you're really interested in then screen printing is probably part that you will also enjoy. Yeah I um, repeat pattern is not my forte. Uh, <laughs> I've learned that very quickly when Jill was like, why aren't you getting this? <laughs> I was just like, I don't know. <laughs> um, and so that was probably like the most difficult class for me. Um, and that was one of my first ones that I took. So like kind of off of that, I it kind of got easier. And I took I took weaving. Me and Taylor were loom neighbors. Um, That's great. So cute. And, uh, <laughs> then I took weaving too. And that is a pretty challenging class because you're learning more on top of what you learned in weaving one. So you learn how to like warp paint which is like you have your warps all set and then you paint them and then you wash like the dye and then you wash them and then you put them on the loom and it has to be exact or else your pattern can be messed up um, but it was still one of my favorite classes and Doris um, just like really pushes you to do your best work because she you know she's incredible and she wants you to be incredible um, mm -hmm. but yeah screen uh, I didn't take screen printing stop saying that um, <laughs> like the CAD class and all the repeat pattern classes were s very difficult for me just because I'm just like, I, I don't want it to repeat. <laughs> They're like, you have, it, it's a repeat pattern, it has to. <laughs> I'm like, but what about like asymmetrical stuff? They're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they have the repeat pattern class anymore. I think they turned it into like a drawing class just for fibers people. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so. That's cool. Yeah. I thought dyeing was really hard. The dyeing class, surface and structures. I was I'm not good at dyeing because it's too messy for me. I can't control it enough. But so that one was really hard for me personally. But some people love dyeing fabric. I wish that was I like the surface cool. design class. That that one's hard just because again, yeah, it is really messy and like you have to like it's if like you want science. a certain color, you have to mix it very precisely and like sometimes it doesn't work the way you want. It's it's like kind of it's like taking a chemistry class, but yeah, um, and it's like a lot more sterile, I think, than like a, like just being in the dye lab is like a weird experience, um, especially since the rest of the fibers building is like not like the dye room, uh, <laughs> the dye lab. Um, I was watching Breaking Bad when I took that class, and I felt like I was like in a meth lab sometimes. <laughs> yes, that's amazing. Isn't it funny that you like remember the series that you were watching while you were working on something? Oh my God. I totally have that too. <laughs> yeah, I realized though when you were talking about the warp, like fibers has its own like lingo. Uh, yeah. Because like I was like, oh, I wonder if they know what a warp is, or 
you know. Um, I don't. <laughs> so the warp is like what you. That's it's the part like that you thread first on the loom. Yeah, like the warp is this way and the weft is like what weaves in this way. <laughs> <laughs> We're weaving. <laughs> really like. <laughs> that's how I always explain it to people. <laughs> it's an exclusive club. <laughs> I really hope that somebody tuned in like just at that moment. <laughs> Our green slime. <laughs> what um, electives did you guys take, and which ones did you like best? Like the ones in fibers. I took beading. beading, 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 beading. That's how Colin, Colleen and I met. We met in a beading class. Yeah, nobody in the class talked except for me and one other girl, and we were obnoxious. And I think Taylor was like, I like these people. And, came over. <laughs> and then literally through the whole class, it was very quiet, except for the three of us at this table. And then eventually, I think it was like the last day, everyone started talking more. <laughs> it was the beginning but, of our love story. It was. Aww. It was. That's been yeah. forever. No. <laughs> but Baby is awesome. It's taught by Sam Norgard, and she doesn't really teach that many classes, I don't think, anymore. Mm -hmm. um, she Amazing. She taught this beating class. Like, if you want to feel like you are the most beautiful and special person in the world, and that your talent matters, please take a class with Sam Norgard. Yeah. Because she will make you feel that way, and she genuinely know, like, she knows what she's doing in beating. And so it, I don't know. It was just a delight. That class was like, I think I took that like midway, like right before things start getting really, really hard, and it definitely gave me confidence and it was just like a fun it's just a really fun class to take that um, is just a little different than all the other fibers classes yeah and it gave me like that boost to like finish out school strong so I would my, suggest that one my like whole senior portfolio was beading and beading beading was one of the first class it was the first class that I took as a fibers major um, and I had Sam Norgard as my design two teacher when I first transferred to SCAD. Um, and she was just like, she was magical in that class too. Like I was like, I can't draw. And she's like, I'm going to teach you. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and then I saw her in beading and it was just like, she pushes you to like, she's like, oh, this is your comfort zone. Well, here, add something else. Like really make it special. And I think she's the reason that I kind of like fell in love with beading and understood how far you can push it um, because she it's not you don't have to just do jewelry like pe a lot of people think like beading is jewelry or you know you can only bead clothing no we we did ev anything like she was like you want to bead on paper bead on paper if you want to make a sculpture that's freestanding out of beads do it and she I think that I think, was amazing I think one of her projects now is that you get to bead a bra yeah. yeah, which is so dope. And then we had to like make a beaded dessert. Do you remember that? Yeah, I made chocolate covered strawberries. Yeah, mm -hmm. I found them the other day. And my dad wouldn't let me throw them away because <laughs> they're beautiful. <laughs> yeah, but it like I for my first project we had to make like a, a necklace or a collar. I think that was the first, was that the first one? No, um, we, the tie was the first the second one. one. Yeah, and so she was like. I was like, I want to make this huge pendant. And she was like, well, okay, do it. <laughs> like, I remember her just kind of like twitching and being like, if you want to do it, you can do it. And I spent <laughs> hours and hours and hours making this giant necklace. It was dope. Um, I, was, I yeah. keep saying dope. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, like, she never was like, no, do something easier. She was like, do this giant necklace. It was the size <laughs> of my head. I didn't. And it, it was awesome. So. What about you, Megan? What electives did you take? Um, yeah. I, I'm trying to think. I think I only took one fibers elective because by the time I switched, I had oh, used photo. like all my photo stuff was my like elect my like free electives. Yeah. Um. So I spent a lot of time taking the major classes, which was great. But I my senior year, I took studio production with Pam. And oh. It was great. Um, I had never had Pam before, but I had heard of her, like, wonder. <laughs> um, so studio production was basically, like, learning how to make a business out of, like, your practice, more or less. Um, she would give us, like, prompts of, like, projects. It's more about, like, making objects um, than it is about, like, <sighs> I don't know. Like, it was kind of 
good because it was while I was taking my um, second or maybe it was my no, it was my second portfolio class, my second senior class. Um, so it would be like, okay, make three ser like three objects in this series that go together um, about a theme. So the first project was like, she would give us a word and we had to make something based on that word. It was like, one of them was like sleeping, one of them was eating, and the other one I think was like working or something like that. And mine was sleeping, so I made like a mobile kind of thing. Um, That's cute. And that was fun. And then we had to make like three of something, like a duplicate. Um, and that's when I made my pennant banners, I think. I don't know. So it was great because it's like teaches you how to really be like professional um, with your projects, if you want to call them products. So we'd have like learn how to make tags or like uh, like packaging and stuff like that, which I think a lot of like most fibers classes don't really deal with that side of it. They're just like teaching you a skill. Um, so it was really useful in that sense because it like was um, preparing you if you wanted to have a studio practice of your own. Um, so that was nice. I wish so badly I had taken the quilting class, um, but I decided to take a printmaking class instead because um, I was interested in printmaking, but I really loved my printmaking class. Um, so I'm kind of torn. But I just love Pam. She's amazing because um, she doesn't really, like, she doesn't, like, turn you down. Like, she'll take your ideas and be like, okay, this is an interesting idea. Like, go with it and see what happens. And um, makes you feel, like, amazing and really intelligent and makes you, like, really explore your ideas um, more than if you were just like, I want to make it because it's pretty. Um, <laughs> so, and Doris was the same way. She wouldn't let you make anything cute. No, she had a, you had to have a reason for everything, which is a big thing at SCAD, or in Fibers, like, you don't just make something because it's cute. Yeah. Um, I took mm -hmm. I took quilting with Pam, and um, it, it, it was like that. It was like, well, why do you want to make this quilt? And it was just like, because it's the technique that you taught. <laughs> like, <and she> was <laughs> like, no, but, like, what's the story behind it? Um, I think all the professors, like you said, like, really, really, like, cared about what we were making and why we were making it. And we weren't just making art. We were, like, kind of telling a story. Mm -hmm. uh, which is really cool. Sometimes though it would get really frustrating because I remember in my portfolio classes I would be like, I just want to make something for my portfolio. Like I just want to make it. I want it to look good. That's like I want it to be well crafted. That's my concept. And they would be like, okay, but what does it mean? And I'd be like, it doesn't mean anything. It's just like all. Oh, it's just like about like the craft and it's about the product. Like I just yeah. wanted it to be like what it was. And I was like, I'm tired of being so conceptual and artsy fartsy. Like I'm just making this thing and that's what I made. Um, so sometimes it would be too much and I'd be yeah. like, I don't care what it means like that's not the point <laughs> so but I think like balance. I think the best projects I made I like had real ideas about mm -hmm. and I think um, I think that's what they're trying to get at like mm -hmm. like yes we make things because they look cool and they're beautiful but also like this is like the platform for us to use our voices and you can say what you want to say say what you need to say just like a John Mayer song, and, <laughs> and, and take the opportunity to, like, make something super cool. But also, as far as, like, taking electives, you have, like, electives that are within your major that you have to use within your major, but then you have electives that are free, and you can do whatever you want with them. And so I would, like, strongly suggest to, for people to take a, those electives outside of their major. Yeah. So, like... If you're super interested in jewelry making, take a jewelry making class. If you're super interested in film, take a film class or a photo class. I did acting classes, and it was super fun, super freeing, and it was a way for me. I did it my senior year, and it was a way for me to, like, have a class that wasn't my major, that I wasn't, like, so dependent on getting a good grade and super stressed out about, and it was super, super fun. So do that. It's fun. And I think that's something that like your counselors or teachers or whatever, they'll be like, take other classes. Mm -hmm. Don't be too obsessed in your major because it might kill you. <laughs> but it helps you, it helps you like get inspiration from other techniques and other mm -hmm. places and introduce you to other artists. Like, yeah, it's hard to, if you're in a bubble, I mean, even out of school, like lately I've been feeling like in a bubble, so I took some photography classes. Like, you have, you have to continually like learn new things. Like, I do. And I think that kind of helps within any major. 
Um, because you kind of just get boxed in and you're like, I can only do these things. That's me in a box, in case you didn't realize. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a really good point. Because, yeah, absolutely. You can, if you have the option to take stuff outside of your major, you totally should. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't end up doing that, and I wish I would have been able to take, yeah, like a screen printing class or stuff with animation, but I only just went for the classes in my major, and yeah, it does help to branch out outside of that. Would you say um, that there were any classes specifically that really helped you um, for life after SCAD? Senior classes really, really helped me so much. I feel like... Um, it's very, like, free, like, you get to, you have, like, they set these, like, guidelines that seem, like, very, very scary about what you have to accomplish in the year, and they break it down into three studios, so you have, isn't it, is that right, one, two, and three senior mm -hmm. studios, mm -hmm. and um, you have them usually, with for the most part, with the same group of people, so, like, you're with the same students for all three and with the same professor. And sometimes people change depending on like, oh, this didn't work out or I would rather, you know, this professor didn't really work with the way I want to work so I'm going to change to this one. I took Liz. I really like Liz. I took the majority of my classes with Liz. Um, and for me, there was a lot of like one-on-one -on -one time with her and um, she really like helped me like walk through like the process of like the art I was making and you really like have a focus and so you get to do what you want to do and so having that focus but also having like guidelines that I set for myself I think really helped me or is helping me like with what I'm doing now with like setting a schedule like my work has to be on my loom by the end of the week mm -hmm. and I have to do that because I have to, you know I have to project plan thing like things like that so mm -hmm. um I think that was like my favorite time of school were those classes, but I also think they really helped me um, prepare for, I think just like being like a grown up in general, like you really have to take control of your studio practice there and like when you're out in the world and you have to take control of your life, it's very helpful to have like skills like that, so it was the bomb. Dot com. <laughs> your, your group, like your senior group was like really tight. I could tell, like, all of you in Liz's class, and I was super jealous because my senior group was not like that, and <laughs> I wanted it to be that way. <laughs> what did you take? Um, I took Kiowa for the first two, um, and I love Kiowa. I had never taken class with her before, mm -hmm. um, but it was super challenging. Um, Kiowa um, really pushes you to go further than what you're doing, um, and that was kind of frustrating for me at the time. Like, I think senior classes were really frustrating for me for some reason, but um, because I just, like, wanted, I was really overwhelmed by the idea of, like, all the stuff we had to do to finish our portfolio, and so yeah. I would feel really stressed out by, like, her being like, okay, keep working on this one thing when I wanted to just, like, move on and, like, be making things so it was really helpful because she was really like okay like she wanted me to push myself conceptually and I really like appreciated that um, but by the end of it I was like I have nothing and I need to make stuff so she ended up going to Lacoste last quarter so I couldn't take my last senior class with her and I had Deb and Deb is like kind of the opposite where she just was <laughs> like okay like she like here's what you have to say and then she's like all right sounds great um, so it was great because like the first two classes I was like push yourself push yourself push yourself and then the last one I was like okay just go make everything um, but yeah I think my senior group changed a bunch like every quarter um, but the thing I miss most from that um, and I wish I had here is just like getting feedback from other students oh my god it was really yeah. helpful and like I always think of like Matt Bobbins like Matt Bobbins gave like the best feedback <laughs> um, and um, so Betsy. I love him, Matty Bobs. <laughs> He's so great. Um, so I miss that, and like I li like I said, I lived with three other girls, so we could always like be at home, like bouncing ideas off of each other. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not really making anything right now, just because I don't have the resources or space or time. Um, and so if I like feel like it's gonna take me a while when I do start making stuff to like get back into that flow, like you were saying, like setting a schedule for yourself. Um, and stuff like that, so I, like, want to get back into that. Um, but, yeah, senior classes were really hard for me just because I 
was kind of like battling with like what I wanted and what I needed to be doing and like um, I kind of was looking at it more as an experimental time for me to just try out a bunch of stuff that I hadn't tried um, instead of like having a really well put together portfolio I was like okay like I'm interested in printing on paper so I'm going to print on paper um, I'm interested in stitching on paper so I'm going to stitch on paper or like I want to make a bag I want to learn how to use indigo like I just like wanted to explore all these things that I was interested in instead of being like alright my portfolio is just going to be repeat pattern designs it's just going to be like bags it's just going to be this like I wanted to try everything that I had the room to try <laughs> which yeah. um, sometimes I'm like okay like I don't have anything that I'm specialized in but I have all these interests so it's like I'm glad that I tried all those things but I'm also like maybe I should have focused on one thing so I don't know I remember you, I don't know if you told me this, but I remember that Kiowa, who was the chair of the department, I don't know if she still is, but she was when we were there, she said to the senior students, if you're not crying every day, you're not working hard enough. <laughs> I swear to God, I cried every day. I cried every day. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, she did say, like, in our classes, she was like, you're going to cry, and if you're not crying, then you don't care. <laughs> like, basically. <laughs> what she said. And, like, I would go into her office and be like, I don't know what I'm doing, and I know where this project is going. And she would have us do, like, weekly, like, draw. We had, the, the year that we had our senior oh. classes, they were, like, really trying to experiment with the way the senior classes went and trying to make them basically like mini grad school your senior year um, yeah, so way to put it. it was really that's what Kiowa told us <laughs> so she like took us into the grad studios and told showed us what they did and was like yeah that's what we're doing basically like um, we had to do a lot of drawings which weren't like legit like literal drawings like it could be like okay I pasted a bunch of flower petals onto my notebook and that's my drawing. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> just like <laughs> idea, your ideas on paper basically or like with a sample or something but yeah it would felt very much like I was like trying to meet this quota but I was also like I was kind of like be, trying to be rebellious and being like no I want to do it this way and I don't know. It's it's I made it. <laughs> we all survive. That's the, that's the moral of the story. And you will too. No. <laughs> you will. You will. I re finished my last like my notebook the last day of school and I hadn't slept for like forever. I like finished my notebook and then I went to bed and I was like, "All right, I'm done with college. I'm going to go take a nap." <laughs> <laughs> But I, I miss college, like I miss, like you said, like being able to talk to people and getting feedback and learning different things and like I think the fibers, we had so much community, like um, we, we yeah. weren't really like competing with each other because we're all so different and we're all on so many different levels and so there's like such a great sense of community, like we are in a group chat with some girls who are in our senior class and like whenever anybody has, anybody has like news or like a project that they're working on, like we all text each other. And we'll all be like, how is this? Like, what do you think about this? Or like, I'm at this job and I don't know how to use this one machine. Like, do any of you guys know how to do this? And so it's really cool that like we we were close enough in that major to form those kinds of relationships that we don't feel like, oh my gosh, like she got into this one thing and I didn't. It's more like she got into this show. Like, how incredible is that? Mm -hmm. um, and so like I I guess I miss doing that and like working on projects together and like going to friends houses and mm -hmm. eating food and then working on projects Taylor mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually going to Taylor's yeah <laughs> <laughs> the hub, really uh, but like uh, yeah like taught me well the fiber department in, in particular taught me that like these people are the ones who are going to inspire you and who motivate you and um, that really helps when you're in a world with people who are like so many people do quilting people's grandmothers do quilting and it's like what's going to set me apart and why is, why does it matter and then you have friends who are like you're doing great and it just helps I don't know I'm rambling mm -hmm. but it helps um, yeah you mentioned getting into some of the shows what kind of shows do they have um, throughout the year for fibers I think there's a, there is at least one open house that I've been to and it was awesome yeah there's open studio which is super cool because you get to see what all the different classes are doing and excuse me doing and what um, you get to go in the classrooms and actually like see the looms and, and they have like tutorials where you get to like dye a piece of fabric with indigo or um, do like a weaving project or you not you don't actually do a project you get to learn how to weave a little bit um, which is what I went to and which what kind of like made me decide to do it um, same 
Yeah. Fiverr's Open Studio was the day that I decided to switch my major to Fiverr. Yeah, it was great. But I think then there's, like, the senior show, but I think that's those might be the only shows they have, like, in the department. But their SCAD has a lot. SCAD has, like, so many great things going on, but they do a lot of, um, like, shows or I don't, not competition isn't the right thing, that anybody can, like, go into. Drawing Works is a big one. Silver and Ink, I think, is photography. Yeah, yeah. I, I entered Drawing... Was it Drawing Works? There was, like, a drawing There's one. There's a Small that, Works show. Small Works. I entered that so I think one. you did a drawing one with your embroidery pieces. I don't know. You won. All I know is that I won. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> the thing is, I, I didn't draw. I, I was doing I was doing self portraits at the time of like stitching, and so I just took like there were three photographs of my grandpa that I. It sounds so simple and stupid now, but but there photographs that I just like embroidered a pink square, which is it's a long story. Anyway, <laughs> I embroidered a pink square of these photographs, and oh, so, that one's on your website, right? Yeah, yeah, and so that was. That was what I considered a drawing and was considered a drawing in my department. And so it really encouraged Fibers to, like, do things like that because I think Fibers doesn't, like, get um, talked about, like, a ton, ton, I think, in other departments. Or other departments are confused mm. about it. So. Let's see. I remember... Um, like, it's true, like, a lot of other departments don't really get us. I remember hearing that the fashion department called us the Birkenstock girls. Yeah. Um, which I thought was hilarious. hilarious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not, there aren't <laughs> lesbians. There were, there were, like, <laughs> we're, we're a lot not of lesbians. lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> but it was because we're so, like, like, our desks, like, our ta- workspaces and fibers was, like, a big, huge table we all sat around and worked. So it was, like, very, like, kumbaya, let's talk about, like, Vaginas or like <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of vagina art. It's true. There was, there was there a was. ton of vagina art. It was like the nineties were coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Research is very feminist yeah. culture, but I think it's just kind of like we are doing something that like women all throughout history and and men, of course, but yeah. like we. We're just like in, we're not housewives. We're not trying to do that, but we're trying to create handmade things, and we are trying to preserve techniques. And I think that sometimes people think like preservation means like I don't know, like I don't know where I'm trying to go with this, but like mm-hmm. we're trying to preserve things and turn them modern and kind of change what people think. Like I know a lot of people are like, oh, so you can go work in a sweatshop? It's like, well, no, and even if, like, factories do come back over here, like, it's nothing like what you think. And it's just more about, like, educating people on what fibers is, where our textiles come from. And I think people think that's a little granola, hippy-dippy. Mm-hmm. But it, it's so important to us and our culture. And, like, where, where, do you, where do your clothes come from? And who makes it? And why? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's important. And I think that's where people kind of get confused, you know? Yeah. There's a lot of awareness, I feel like, in the fibers department of, um, I think, a lot of awareness of, like, what it means to be female and what it means to be doing these things that, like, traditionally would be, like, you're learning these things so that you could be a good housewife and so mm-hmm. that you you seem, mm-hmm. you know, like a viable option as a wife. And, um, which were actually, like, survival things. Like, women had to, like, make clothes. Um and, but there's a lot of awareness around that, and so it's not so much like, oh, we're doing this because of this. It's like, no, we're doing this because this is something that we really like and enjoy, and we're going to use our voices to talk about it. And even though we're talking about female, there are men in the department. Yeah. And I feel like I loved the guys in our department, and I feel like there are more now than there was when we were there. But um, I I really liked that, and I feel like a lot of the guys – Produced a lot of really cool, really good work. In that Bob work. is being one. He's an amazing leaper. Incredible work. And I think it was like cool that um, they were so comfortable, like sharing their. They're like, well, also guys do. And sometimes, like, because sometimes you'd be in a class with all girls, which seems like overwhelming. But then there's that mm-hmm. guy in there who's the voice of reason, who can kind of like 
be like, this is this isn't against you. Like yeah. you're Paolo. the artist who <laughs> Yeah. And so like it it kind of helped kind of like bring us down from the cloud sometimes. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. cool. They had incredible work. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're all the guys are all amazing. artists, you know? So yeah. Awesome. Speaking of speaking of like awareness though, I really think there's another side to it that's like a lot of sustainability people come into fibers. Um, yes. because they want to be like really eco friendly and fibers is like important to that because there is a lot of like acrylic, like cheapo sweatshop things happening in the fabric world. Um, and it's really important to kind of think about like is this sustainable? Um, and it is if you go back to like the more natural, like slower processes. But yeah, so it's really interesting that there's like a lot of there's a lot of sides to it. So. Yeah, <laughs> just wanted to throw that in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hadn't thought about that at all. Like I figured it had to come up about like the guy versus girl ratio, but I hadn't thought about yeah, just like how you're kind of taking it back from like just being a useful trade and then bringing it back to being an art. It's art, like no matter what gender makes it or like, it doesn't matter. We're all making art and we're all trying to like kind of express this bigger story. And um, even if like, even if it's just to make beautiful, handmade, well-crafted products, like we're bringing that back. And I think that whether you're a guy or girl or whatever race or whatever, like it doesn't matter. We're all artists and we're all trying to bring that back. I don't know. Unrelated, but I always have to ask, did you guys go to the career fair ever, and was it helpful? No. I never no. went. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to work corporate, so that, for me, I had no interest in it, and so I, I spent my time beating and watching Netflix. <laughs> yeah. I had a job right out of school, so I didn't really feel like going. Not that I, I don't think I would have gone even if I didn't. <laughs> I don't think that I don't think the career fair really lends itself to fibers that much. Um, there are like yeah big corporations that come like there's like uh, Carter's and some oh, other man. ones that come uh, Abercrombie and Fitch. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I also I wasn't really interested in the companies that were coming to SCAD that much, um, and I wasn't really sure where I was going to be going. I didn't think I wanted to do this big corporate thing, and if I did, it wasn't really what they were offering at the career fair, so I never went to the career fair. And I did, a lot of them were like to get internships, and I had an internship. Me and Taylor had an internship together. It was so great. It was like the best internship ever, seriously. I talk about it a lot because a lot of people, when they go to their internships, they go to a big city and have to like find an apartment and find a way to commute, and we lived like in the countryside in Connecticut and walked two minutes to work and had lunch by the river and like saw cows, and oh. it was amazing. <laughs> it was so Perfect. amazing. That's where I went to work after school, actually. I, I worked for them for a little bit and then decided I wanted to be home. Connecticut was too far away. But one thing that I think SCAD does well and Fivers did really well is there are so many opportunities. If you, even if you don't go to the career fair, there are so many opportunities There's to get more. internships and to get jobs because SCAD is really, I think, becoming a well-known school and becoming a school that is respected as far as the students they um they kind of have, and so so many companies or big businesses, small businesses, come to SCAD and say, "Well, we want to have interns. Do you have interns? We want to have, you know, um, we want people fresh out of school to do these jobs." And so, if you really, really want to do those things, you really want an internship. There are so many opportunities. So, like, if you go to SCAD and you graduate and you didn't get an internship, it's because you didn't try. Because mm -hmm. SCAD has so many opportunities to to get whatever you want. I was scared to have an internship and I didn't want to do corporate. And here's this little, tiny, amazing company that's doing so well right now um, that had this great internship program that they've done with SCAD for a long time and it was great and I it was really, really cool. So It was nice. It like fell I think it fell into both of our laps. I just saw it on the SCAD Fibers page. It was like, hey, internship at a small wallpaper company. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll email them. And then I, like, got it. And I was like, okay, that was easy. <laughs> it was great. And it's literally, it's like a husband and wife run a wallpaper company in Connecticut. And they do screen printed 
wallpaper and like woven grass cloth wallpaper and stuff and it was it's called 22 if anyone wants to look it up 22 <laughs> they're super great it was really really it was like seriously the perfect internship and we oh, did get to it? go to New York City and stuff so like it wasn't totally remote because um, they have yeah. a showroom in New York so we got to go see that and stuff um, what so. did you say Lisa? oh just how long was the internship how many oh. was it a month or two it was two months right Maybe like a month and a half. It wasn't super long. It was like six weeks. Yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah, it was. So I still felt like I had summer. And the nice thing about that internship is I kind of realized how small the fibers world can be, um, because yeah. like I the showroom that was in New York, there was a girl that was like the in-house weaver there, and she went to SCAD and had Doris for weaving. Um, yeah. And I ended up yeah, helping or... my roommate get an internship with that weaver this following summer so it's like it's like a really small like con connected world and even like since I've been in San Francisco like I've met a lot of SCAD people like my boss went to SCAD and um, stuff like that so it is it's very small I I had just moved to Charleston and I was in like this random little shop in town like smallest little place and I was like talking and the woman was like oh what do you do for life and I was like telling her and then all of a sudden a girl on the other side of the store is like I go to SCAD right now so I'm, in, awesome. I'm in the meeting class right now. Like she's like, I'm just here for the weekend, and I was like, and so we talked about we talked about like the classes and stuff, and mm -hmm. I, just, I think it's so cool that like, and I think a lot of people want to work with SCAD students because SCAD pushes us to like work hard, and like it makes us like have a really hard work work ethic for most mm -hmm. people. I mean, not all, yeah. of course, but um, like I like that time management and what does it. I invested in almost all the techniques I learned, whether I liked them or not. I had to learn them, and like, you're gonna have to do that in jobs sometimes. And I think that, you know, a lot of bigger corporations really notice and respect that. And I think that's something. And SCAD like teaches you to collaborate a lot. Like I collaborate. Mm -hmm. I was when I first got to SCAD, I was in the fashion department, and um, I had I knew somebody who was working on like a graduate thesis, and she was like, "Would you like to come and like help me with wardrobe?" And so I was like, "Sure." So I did. I was one of the wardrobe people on this like graduate film thing, and now I'm on IMDb because I did mm -hmm. it. And somebody is like, so it's like Fancy. you get these really strange like connections um, with like people in other departments, but it's so it's so cool. Like that was such an awesome experience, you know. Um, so it's just cool you can collaborate and meet people and do things and be with people and yeah <laughs> Scad's the cool place mm -hmm. hire us <laughs> hire us <laughs> seriously <laughs> um, now the big scary question what is your highest praise of the Firebirds department and then what's your biggest like criticism or way that you think that it could improve hmm this is always where, like, the awkward silence, I feel like, falls I in. know. <laughs> this is the part where I always get worried that this is when my channel gets, like, shut down. <laughs> the SCAD, the SCAD's listening. The, the ombudsman's going to contact you. Oh, definitely. I've <laughs> already been <laughs> warned. Maybe not warned. I've been told that um, some of the career advisor folks at SCAD watch this, so if you're watching, hello. No way. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it's a great thing. Um, okay, so <laughs> no, I really do. This is really exciting because it's like when I when I um, was looking into SCAD, there wasn't a lot of resources about what it's like to go to SCAD, um, mm -hmm. and I didn't get to go to like the summer seminar thing or whatever because I lived so far away, and I decided to go so last minute that I just kind of like went and didn't really know what I was getting myself into. Um, so this is great. But to answer the question, um, I think one thing that I really love about fibers really was like it was very community based like everyone was in it together and like the professors are really accessible and um, easy to talk to about like anything really like just like how you're feeling about your work or how you're feeling about your life um, <laughs> which kind of you know informs your work obviously but um, yeah I definitely think the community is like what really binds the fibers department together um, and I remember just like it would always be like a relief to go back into Pepe and just like be with my fibers friends and in the sunshine you know I don't know it was great um, 
so I loved I loved that. I didn't really get that with photo. Everyone is kind of just like doing their own thing, and um, I just I don't know. Even the building Pepe is beautiful and wonderful, and I loved being in Pepe, um, except for when I was there overnight and wanted to die. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but then I guess the biggest criticism I don't know. I guess senior year it was shifting. Um, so it felt sort of disorganized at times, but I think they were, they, obviously they were trying to remedy that. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, it's hard. I don't really know what my biggest criticism is. Um, maybe just like, there isn't a lot of like real, real world kind of, how do you do this and make money? And and I think they try their best to like prepare you for a career or like give you the resources and they're definitely available if you want them. But like um, just like practical things like how do you figure out how to run a small business or <laughs> um, which I think most like a good majority of people in the fibers department are looking to run their own business or work for themselves. Um, so I think it would have been helpful to have really like more practical advice on that but for the most part they really were like like they would bring in alumni that did have their own businesses or they would bring in people to have a panel you know like they were like the alumni is very well connected to the fibers department um, yeah. and they do their best to like bring in a lot of successful alum so yeah I don't really have any like huge criticisms I don't think I think it's a it's a great program um, and I, I miss it a lot <laughs> yeah, I would agree. I think um, the people and kind of like this kind of idea of studio culture that you you have this group of people that um, and you have a practice and you come in with your studio practice and then there's there's a culture of people who can help you you know talk and work through um, your ideas and and when you get close to other people in the department they know you and they know your process and they know what you've been working on and so they can really speak on the work you've been doing. And I think Fibers does a really good job at cultivating those kinds of relationships and um, I think they, for the most part, have a very diverse group of professors who um, mm -hmm. have different strengths and weaknesses and um, can really, I think they also have different personalities which when you find a professor that you think clicks with you, I think then you can work with them closer or they could be your advisor um, versus <clears throat> like someone with a different personality, there's another professor, you know, things like that. Um, and I think it just, there's a really, it's just a good environment. I feel like it's a good, healthy environment. Um, and I feel like I really did learn a lot. Um, I got a lot out of the program. But, and criticism is really hard because it, I think if I was just graduated, I would have criticism. But because I kind of have like hindsight where I could be like, well, it seemed bad then, but really I was learning this or learning that. Um, and I would agree, like it seemed a little discombobulated because they were like shifting a little bit. Um, but overall, it was pretty great. And I feel pretty blessed to have had that, had even like the ability to go there or the fact that even mm -hmm. like, found out about SCAD and about fibers, so mm. overall it was a very positive experience. Yeah, I um, my praise is like the community and the professors and the fact that they have such like high quality professors mm -hmm. who aren't just like, I don't want to tell me, but they're not washed up artists, they're people who are like continuing to make work and they are learning from you and they're pushing themselves as artists and so you see, you see that and that's like to me that's like a huge respect thing like I don't like when professors are like lecturing at me and they're like you have to do all these things and I'm like what are you doing what mm -hmm. what art are you making and it kind of helps put things in perspective when they're like hey I'm having a gallery show um, in downtown mm -hmm. on Saturday like I would love it if you guys came and supported me and it's like it's this crazy you know thing that you would go and support your professors but that's amazing and the mm -hmm. fact that like they're they're your mentors is just like the best thing. And you can I mean I'm I could still email them some of mm -hmm. them and be like, hey, I have this question. 
um, or hey, like I have this project coming up and I just don't know what to do. Can you help me? Mm. Um, like I, I follow Pam on Instagram. Like <laughs> <laughs> Pam is doing amazing. She's retired and she's still showing work. Like but she's I saw amazing. Her stuff on Pinterest and I was like, what? <laughs> she, like she's incredible. And it's like I want to be like that, and it helps me aspire to be like that. Um, I for criticism, I think just as somebody who's trying to start their own business, it's been kind of difficult understanding like legally, what do I have to do if like. I want to gain someone's permission for something or like mm. copyright. Like I yeah. saw a scarf that someone was wearing recently that I sold to somebody um, and it was from it was from like anthropology or I, no, I don't want to use any names. I don't know where it was from. It began with an A. I don't know. <laughs> um, I could be completely wrong. I, to so I don't want to say anything. Check, check. <laughs> yeah, check, check, check. Check. Shut down. But like I, yeah, right. Sorry. So sorry. It was not anthropology. It was something else. Um, anyways, it it looked strangely like mine, and not saying it that they still, but it's like, what should I be doing as a small business to protect my designs? It just made me yeah. kind of think that. I think it was just a strange coincidence because honestly, how many weaving patterns are there? They're limited to choose from some days, mm -hmm. and so um, it just like makes you kind of think and. Like I don't, I don't know. How do I protect things that I put up online? Like mm -hmm. how do I watermark certain things? Because like if I want to put my work up on Pinterest, it's like what exactly does that mean? And what happens if somebody does steal one of my quilts? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or um, like taxes. You know what? Mm -hmm. What kind of what kind Real of small thing. business am I? Like right. what kind of goods am I making? I don't want to. Am I a crafter? Because that to me, I feel like sometimes that devalues my work. But I'm also mm -hmm. not like a place that you can go in and buy something. So it's like, what exactly am I, and how do I categorize myself? And not saying that should be a whole class, um, but like it would be it would be cool to have like some lectures every now and then that kind of help make mm -hmm. you think about that um, in a way that like is useful for fibers. And I mean, Scott did a great job bringing in alumni that were small business owners and maybe just talking more about like logistically speaking like how do I do this because I mean I'm working on a project now where I'm I'm using the community around me it's like do I have to have them sign waivers mm -hmm. um, like do I, I mean I'm sure I have to document everything what if I use their photograph in something like in a gallery show like what legally do I have to have them sign and so I'm kind of just winging it um, but I think things like that would have been would have been helpful and I'm not sure I mean I don't know if like even in illustration like I don't know if they harped on that as much as like I want I want to be annoyed by it so that it way seems, I'm just like I know <laughs> it seems like what I've heard from the illustration is like you learn a lot more how to be like a freelance artist which we didn't really get because I feel like a lot of fibers you can be free you can freelance um, yeah. and like if you are running your own business in some sense you are freelancing maybe but we didn't really get that business side of it as much. And I know Kendra, again, like, told me that she, like, she took a business class as an elective, mm -hmm. um, and she was, like, so glad that she took a business class. Um, so I wish that we had some more just, like, business-y stuff. <laughs> I agree with that wholeheartedly, like, even for our department, and that'll be my criticism when I talk about sequential <laughs> art. But really, I think our course was so jam-packed with just things that we had to like learn how to do that then by the time you're a senior you've spent all this time doing like different trade stuff and then there's no time to talk about like yeah how to do taxes should you register as a small business um how to do invoices just basic stuff like that there was nothing talked about that and it, it really was it's just like you learn how to do all this stuff and then you're a senior and you do a project and then they push you off the cliff and mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you're like ah, what am I doing with my mm -hmm. life I mean everything like craft fairs like I didn't even know how to get into a craft fair like mm -hmm. literally I'm so thankful Taylor was there because I was like I can't I can't <laughs> sell things and give people receipts mm -hmm. do they need tat like how do I use the square thing like <laughs> <laughs> Like, how do I set up a booth display? Like, yeah. that would be a pretty cool yeah. lecture. Like, mm -hmm. okay, I want to sell my stuff at a craft fair. Or even, like, I know, Lisa, you go to, like, 
you sell your comic. Yeah, the conventions and stuff, they yeah. briefly talk about that, but yeah, none of the setup and none of like how you should organize like a till for hmm. your money and then use a square and anything oh. like that. <laughs> but, like, but like those things to me could have been, and like, I don't know, it was just what things, what are the best things to put in front? I know it's stupid stuff that you can like mm -hmm. look up online, but, but it would have just been cool every now to talk about it, every now and then to yeah. talk about it because like I felt I felt like there was there were amazing artists all around me and I know Taylor's gonna be like you were great but like <laughs> you know um, but like I felt I felt like I was kind of like deer in headlights which I know it's like the first time you do it but um, I don't know just having a better understanding of the culture and the world going mm -hmm. on around me especially when people are like. <laughs> Someone was like, I can make that at home. And I'm like, I hate that so much. Like, don't, things not to say to a fibers major, I can make that at home or you Walmart didn't. had that for five months. Yeah. Do you have the time to make this at home? That's really the question. <laughs> and also don't ask people from fibers to like teach, give you free lessons on how to sew or how to knit because it devalues our work. Just throwing <laughs> that out there. I just, mm -hmm. I'll teach a few people, it. but... Yeah, I definitely agree with, like, crafters and stuff. I actually worked with, like, a small letterpress studio that's out here. They make cards um, and prints and stuff like that, and I went with them to um, a West, West Coast Craft, which is a big craft fair out here, and um, it was really, like, I had to learn that from their hands-on, like, experience um, mm -hmm. and how they set up their booth, and it's just two people. Um, so, like, they were also kind of, like, figuring it out as they went, mm -hmm. um, but like seeing what works and what doesn't work um yeah so yeah i wish that they would like i did have to i have to learn a lot of things like on like in real life in the moment you know and it's like oh i wish i had like learned this in school because it wouldn't hurt me now you know like I could, it's like you can take a blow from stuff like that you know yeah <sighs> Universally agreed. Yep. <laughs> I feel like most majors, that's kind of where people are stumped on. And it's, I love that I learned all the techniques I did. It's just sometimes it was like, and I hate business. I hate talking about business. I hate mm -hmm. numbers. I hate all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but sometimes to get it like forced on you, so if people would, are wouldn't be awful. Are listening right now? These are our critiques, and you should really work on it for future students. <laughs> because honestly, SCAD is such a great school that if Honestly, that's our only critique. You're mm -hmm. welcome. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Don't take my diploma back, please. <laughs> that's all I have. That's all I have. That's all I got. <laughs> okay, final question. Why should students choose to be a fibers major? That's always like really the pinkiest question. question but I'm always interested <laughs> in what you guys have to say. <laughs> um because it's amazing and you learn more about yourself in the culture around you than you would think and um, it's just like an awesome way to express yourself and even if it's something that like you don't want to do as a career I mean it's great like if it's therapeutic no matter what if it's your business or if it's just a hobby like there's nothing wrong with that mm -hmm. yeah I don't know. It's amazing, and you should do it, and it's magical, and we will be our friends. We'll have a really good connection. It's magical. Yeah. <laughs> um, the thing that I always, like, when I'm writing cover letters about, you know, why people should hire me, um, I s always mention that, like, more than anything, like, I learned, yeah, I learned the skill set, but I learned how to, like, problem solve, mm -hmm. um, which is a huge, I think it's a huge thing in fibers just because you have like a physical thing that you're working on so it's like oh you have this hiccup you have to stop you have to like undo everything that you've done to fix like one tiny mistake or like you're like have this thought of like what it's going to turn out like and you have to like go through all the steps to get to that so that's like one thing I always put in my cover letters is that I like have learned how to problem solve like for a design project um so I think Fibers is very useful for that, and it's just like, I think it's one of the more unique majors, um, just because you can be interested in drawing and you'll have a place in Fibers, you can be interested in working with your hands and you'll have a place in Fibers, you can be interested in working on a computer and you'll have a place in Fibers, like Fibers will fit most interests um, artistically, I think, like Painting majors can go take a fibers class. Photo majors can take a fibers class. Um, so 
I think it's a very versatile major and most people will find a home somewhere in fibers, be it knitting or screen printing or dyeing or felting little figurines, like whatever it is, like you'll probably find something that you like about fibers. <laughs> yeah. My pitch. I agree. Everything you guys have said. And also I feel like people are super intrigued by fibers. They're really interested and when I say I weave, people are like, What? <laughs> <laughs> Or like when you knit out in public. <laughs> um, but I think I think it it's a cool major and it's a cool place for people. I think specifically SCAD in general is like I think if you're an artist or you're an artsy person, in some way we're very different than uh, other people. And um, I think when you go to a place where you find people who are like you or who, um, even if we have all these different things that our lives are so different. I think all the students at SCAD come from very different areas, but we have this thing in common and that's artistic expression and um, artistic talent. And so just in SCAD when you have that, you feel like, like this is someplace I can belong. And then when you find your major, like I found fibers, I'm like, these are people that I can really relate to maybe for the first time in my life, on people that I can relate to and who inspire me and who push me to be better. And um, and you can just really, I think, if you let yourself, you can really let the opportunity to just become the artist that you want to be. And um, Fibers did that for me. So if you're into Fibers, go for it. If you don't know what you're into, I think, like, follow your heart and do... Like, what you want to do, I think, even if you are not sure what, like, I graduated and not sure what I'm going to do with my degree. I still don't know. Um, mm -hmm. But if you, if, if what you're, if you think what you're doing is in the right direction, if, if you want to take fibers, but you can't really say, like, oh, I want to be, like, a pattern designer, I want to work for Calvin Klein or something like that, that's okay. Just do it because you have passion for it, and then someday in some weird way it'll work itself out and um, do your thing man do your oh, thing I'm gonna show everyone this this is the letter place oh, I love <laughs> That's it the place I worked for <laughs> beautiful this is my mantra <laughs> things will work out <laughs> work out it's true so it doesn't look like we have any questions in the chat, so do you guys just have any closing thoughts then? My closing thought is I miss you guys. I know. <laughs> you guys too. Oh my gosh, I miss everybody. Let's take a trap. I'm Let's kidding. have a reunion. We need it. We need I just it. keep like crossing my fingers that more and more of our friends from college get married so that we can like go back to Savannah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I yeah. think I'm probably going to try and go back for graduation this year, so if anyone wants to join me. Oh, I, so I live cool. very close to there, so hey. Colleen does. Yeah. I'm actually <laughs> further away now. <laughs> where are you? I'm in Michigan now, so. Oh, oh my gosh, where? State capital for once. <laughs> I'm in Lansing. Oh, my gosh. I should come visit you. We're not that far. Not That's that true. we were that far I before. I drive. But some through Indiana, like, on the way up here and everything. Oh, but, oh, well, helpful. people on the Internet don't need to know that right now. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Internet people. I will you. say, Lisa, I feel like this is a super cool thing you're doing, yeah. and it's a really great resource, and I don't know. I'm so proud of you. It's so exciting. Uh, <laughs> thanks. This is just something that I wish I would have had to listen to, like, when yeah. I was going to come to SCAD and everything because I had zero clue. Yeah. Well, I went to SCAD, and I didn't even, I, like, didn't even know anything about the school. I just went on, like, pure blind luck. Like, I didn't even visit the school first. Mm -hmm. And so it would have just been cool just to listen to, like, people talk about it, even if it's, you know, us blabbing about how much we love fibers. <laughs> but that's <laughs> no, awesome. No, it was good. That you guys really know. sold it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, I'll go ahead and close this out then so that we can keep chatting in secret. <laughs> okay, thanks for listening, everybody, and I'm hoping to do one on film next, maybe get some international students, fingers crossed. We'll see what's next, but anyway, thanks for listening.